We're here at the Charles Alice Art Museum to uncover the history of burlesque in America. Hi, I'm Camarell, here with curator Anne-Marie Salkins. Let's go, look at this. So Anne-Marie, tell us, um, how did the idea for this exhibition originate, and how long have you and co-curator Martha Chaiklin been working on this? In this case, a very good friend of mine, Jim Cutting, uh, it's his daughter Amber Ray, who I was introduced to, and the first uh, idea for the exhibition was actually to do a solo show of her work, her costumes, her photographs, her posters, um, and her life in burlesque. But um, then we kind of all mutually decided to expand the exhibition and make it more historical, and so that's why we have this as the result. It's really amazing how wide spanning it is, covering ephemera and documents from even going back to the 19th century mm -hmm. up to today. And in the exhibition notes, um, you mentioned neo burlesque. In comparing neo burlesque, which apparently dates to say about the 1990s, in comparing to more vintage things, are there differences in style or in attitudes? First of all, I have to say that I'm not a burlesque performer, uh, but definitely um, the new neo burlesque is, I would say, more acrobatic sometimes, and they certainly draw from a longer and broader history of performance and from uh, past burlesque performers, um, and so you have a much richer mix, I would say, in neo burlesque, and it's happening um, in small stages as well as big stages as well. The exhibition essay includes a statement. Um, the enthusiasm is so great among new feminists and punk rock do-it-yourselfers and others that burlesque is here to stay. And so what do you think the appeal is for modern audiences? The modern performers certainly are feeling very uh, empowered and uh, female and male audiences are seeing that and feeling it as well. The historical burlesque performers were also empowered because there were less opportunities for women in the marketplace. Yeah, it's a rich history and I hope uh, everyone enjoys it. I think you will too. I'm personally very excited to have a major Ed Paschke painting in the exhibition. He was very attracted to outsiders and carnivalesque figures, and so uh, he did do a series called the Stripper Series, and this is one of his iconic images from that series. And for me personally, it's just very exciting to have a major painting and a major artwork in the exhibition on burlesque. So another exciting thing uh, that came about with this exhibition was the discovery of burlesque work by Charles W. Thwaites from the Museum of Wisconsin Art. Here you can see three examples of dry oil on paper. Uh, there's an additional watercolor in the exhibition as well, but it's really nice to have that collaboration with the Museum of Wisconsin Art and to see such great works of art in the exhibition. Because burlesque is about performance, it was really important for me to have a video in the exhibition showing skits or short segments of burlesque performance performances by some of the major burlesque stars and so people can actually get a sense of burlesque um, during its heyday. To the right you can see some of the oldest photographs in the exhibition. They include a carte de visite of Lydia Thompson who was the star that really excited everybody about burlesque in 1868 when she brought her troupe to New York City. And then photographs of some of the older performances. One of the constants in burlesque has been the fan dance and it's something that's even performed by neo-burlesque performers today and was performed by Amber Ray at the opening. So one of my favorite pieces in the exhibition is actually this photograph of Gypsy Rose Lee performing at Club Milwaukeean in 1946 and in fact she kind of complained about the stage being too close to the customers. The other thing that the article from the journal said was that she was making a bare living at only $4,000 a week. There were also some really great discoveries of material here in Milwaukee thanks to uh, the Milwaukee County Historical Society and the Milwaukee Public Library. Um, and here you see Jenny or Janice Miller who was actually Miss Milwaukee, which meant she was also Miss Wisconsin in the 30s. She performed a lot in Chicago. We also have photographs of performers from Milwaukee and brochure here from the TikTok Club. Amber Ray and the staff at the Charles Alice and Villa Terrace did a fabulous job of helping with the installation of the exhibition. I know they were working very hard to highlight the costumes. Costumes by Amber Ray are hand designed and created by Amber herself. And the exhibition includes eight authentic costumes.
The exhibition really would not have been possible without the fabulous collectors who lent work from their collections. They include many people, but in particular there's quite a number of works from Janelle Smith, a avid collector of burlesque photography from the 30s and 40s. Other lenders include galleries in the Chicago area, private collectors, and local collectors as well. Emery, thank you so thank much. You. And thanks for joining us again here. See you again next week when we'll look at something else.